kinematics is the description of motion. To describe motion, we use position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time. Which of those are vectors? The four of those are vectors. Sometimes people forget that position is also a vector. Position is a vector because uh, if I have a one-dimensional case and I have two positions, x equals to 2 meters and x equals to negative 2 meters, they are two different locations because uh, one is uh, 2 meters in the positive x direction from the origin. The other one is in the negative x direction. So position is also a vector. And that's why delta x, which is the final position minus the initial position, would be a vector because this comes from vectors. One vector minus the other vector and the result is also a vector. As for time, in certain situations, the physicists may consider time as a vector as you can go forward in time or backwards in time. But in this course, we will treat time as a scalar. If we put a bar on the top, that means this is the average value. Do you remember what average velocity is? It is uh, defined as the delta x over delta t. And average acceleration, it is uh, the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Those are the average values. What about the instantaneous values. To find the instantaneous velocity, we also take average. We do delta x over delta t. But we take average under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. If you have taken pre-calculus, you would know that this is the definition for derivative, dx dt. So the derivative dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t, is the same as delta x over delta t. When the delta t is so small that it approaches to zero, all we have to do is to turn this delta, the capital D in Greek letters, into the lowercase d. Same thing here. We change the capital D delta into the lowercase d. So dx dt is basically delta x over delta t. When the delta t is so small that it approaches to zero, so the capital D's turn into the lowercase d's. If we have a graph problem, because we're dividing, this is the rise over run. So the instantaneous velocity would be the slope of a graph. If this is the rise, that is the run, what do you think goes in the vertical axis? It must be x versus t graph. So that the rise would be delta x and the run would be delta t. So please remember that the derivative is related to the slope of a graph. Let's look at the instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration is also an average acceleration. It is just the average is taken under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. And again, this will be the definition of a derivative. And what does this equal to? It equals to dv dt. We're changing the delta into the lowercase d. And of course, since this is the rise over run, it will be the slope of a graph. And this is the slope of uh, velocity versus time graph for the rise over run. From here, we can also see that delta x would equal to the average velocity times time. So this is the average velocity times time. If we're multiplying, that means uh, this is the height times the base. So in a graph, this will be the area of a graph. Because for area, you would do the height times space. And uh, it will be the area of which kind of graph? If that's the height, that means the vertical axis has to be v. If that's the base, the horizontal axis must be the time. 
Let's say we have a velocity versus time graph like this. The velocity changes according to time, so it is not easy to tell what the average velocity is. Therefore, it is not obvious how much the displacement or the area of the graph is. But if we can divide the time into segments, and we look at the one segment at a time, then within a segment, the velocity does not change as much. So perhaps we can say that the average velocity in this segment is about this much. Then the displacement during this segment of the time can be found as the height times the base, velocity times time, the area of this rectangle. And the total displacement would be the sum of the area of all these rectangles added together. So the displacement would equal to the sum of all the area V times delta T. Do you recognize this sigma? It means the sum of. And V times delta T is the area of each rectangle. And this means that we are adding the area of all the rectangles together to get the total displacement. Of course, all these rectangles added together may not be exactly the same as the area under this curvy graph. So what do you think we can do to make it more accurate? We can cut these rectangles thinner like what's shown here. To make it even more accurate, we would make our rectangles even thinner. In fact, if we can make those rectangles so thin that the thickness delta t approaches to zero, we will get an accurate displacement. So the accurate displacement is the sum of v times delta t under the limit that the delta t, the thickness of the rectangle, is so small that it approaches to zero. You may have learned it in your calculus class that this is the definition of integration. Let's see. When the delta t is so small that it approaches to zero, we turn the Greek letter capital D, which is delta, into the lowercase d. So v delta t turns into v dt. And instead of writing the sigma for the sum of, we write this integration sign, which is kind of like a very long s. To integrate means to add. So the integration sign replaces this sigma. Both means adding things together. When the rectangular strips are so thin that the thickness approaches to zero, the uppercase delta turns into the lowercase d, and the sigma turns into the integration sign. So the displacement delta x equals to the area of a v versus t graph, and it also equals to the integral of v dt, basically the sum of v times delta t. If we look at this equation, we can see that delta v is the average acceleration times the time. And since we're multiplying, that is the area of a graph. It's a height times the base. If the height is the acceleration, that means the vertical axis is A. The base is delta T, so the horizontal axis is T. So this equals to the sum of all the rectangles added together, height times base, and the under the limit when the delta t is so small that it approaches to zero. And this is the definition for the integral of a dt. So just to remember that the derivative means the slope of a graph. And the integration means the area for a graph. We will go into more details and work on some examples in the next lessons.